Hello movie lovers, Bob for Bob's movie review here, and today I want to review for you a movie I just saw in theaters called Bumblebee. <laughs> Be sure to click subscribe and click on the bell icon to be notified whenever I upload great new content. If you do enjoy the video, be sure to show it some love and give it a like rating. So this one's rated PG-13, has a one hour and 54 minute runtime, is an action adventure sci-fi directed by Travis Knight. It stars Haley Steinfeld, George Lindenborg Jr., and John Cena. <laughs> this movie is a prequel to the uh, Transformers franchise that's been long running and beat to the ground and just created something horrible and I think people have just gotten tired of the movies. Um, Bumblebee kind of has remained one of the most popular characters um, and so they decided to do not necessarily an origin story of Bumblebee because it's definitely not his origin but a prequel uh, setting up the first movie basically. Um, I was concerned about John Cena. Uh, I don't, I've never seen any of the movies he's been in, so I wasn't sure how he was going to act. Obviously, uh, wrestling characters who enter movies aren't typically known for being good actors, so it was definitely concerned, and after the horrible performance they managed to pull out of Mark Wahlberg, who I typically enjoy, I just was like, man, this is going to be a train wreck. So we go back at the beginning of this movie to uh, the war on Cybertron, and we see the Autobots kind of escaping, um, and Bumblebee ends up on Earth. This is where the movie gets a little shady, I would say. Um, Bumblebee lands on Earth, and he he doesn't, it's inadvertently, but he uh, kind of like lands on this army group who's out doing a paintball thing or whatever they were doing. And um, they end up like attacking him, and then, uh, I don't know if they ever said which Decepticon it was, followed him to Earth, and uh, he, he ends up winning, but kind of being disabled. And he uh, goes into hiding or something. It's unclear from here what happens, because they don't tell you how much time has passed or, or anything, but it appears to be some time at least has passed. Um, he, he's taken over the role of the iconic uh, Volkswagen Beetle, and he's like now in a junkyard, dis disabled, or you know almost like you could say unconscious. And there's this, this girl and her father has died, and she's trying to fix up her Corvette that they were working together on. And she keeps going to this junkyard to get parts. And she ends up uh, acquiring the <laughs> Volkswagen Beetle. And then somehow it, it kind of brings Bumblebee back. And um, the whole time the Decepticons are trying to find Optimus Prime. And um, they, they come looking for Bumblebee to try to get information from him. Now... <laughs> I really love this movie visually. Um, it had the G1 Transformers. I loved seeing Soundwave like with the big radio cassette thing on it, or the big audio cassette thing on his chest. And I'm pretty sure that was Shockwave with him. Um, it, it didn't quite look right, but it looked pretty close. Um, unlike the horrible, horrible ones they did in the newer, you know, the previous movies, where it's just like, why do they even bother, you know? Uh, so I love the look of the G1 Transformers. That was so cool. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of them in this one. You know, it's mainly Bumblebee and there's a couple Decepticons and that's about it. So it's, it's kind of bittersweet, I guess, in a way that you, we got to finally see, you know, the Transformers, how we would like them to be. But there were so few, so few of them. Uh, second complaint on this one, the Decepticons killed a few people which, you know, okay, they kill people, but I don't know, it just seemed wrong to me. It just felt off, it seemed wrong for the tone of the movie, and this was a good family-friendly movie. Um, it, I don't really remember any kind of just inappropriate things like they managed to put in the other Transformers movies, but they did kill a few people, and I just, to me, it just seemed really off. However, I did love everything else about this movie. I thought it was a great story. Surprisingly, it was a really funny movie. They had lots of good comedic elements, lots of one-liners, lots of funny things. I believe they managed to keep it clean and family-friendly and just a lot of fun. I believe this is the best Transformers movie to date. Of course, I haven't ever seen the animated one, but 
we'll, we'll call this, you know, the Michael Bay era of Transformers. This is the best one. Uh, definitely highly enjoyed this one. Highly recommend it. If you guys are fans of, you know, the original cartoon, probably going to be uh, a little more into this one than the other ones. They, however, didn't really go along with the storyline of the original G1 cartoon. Um, and I was kind of questioning whether it went into the storyline of the new movies. Um, I think by the time this one ends, it does kind of lead up to, or possibly there's a gap where they could make another movie or 10 between this one and uh, the original uh, Transformers movie. But um, without seeing that one recently, I can't really comment too much on that, but it did seem like they kind of put everything in place to lead up to that one. So for a score on this one, guys, I'm going to give it 8 out of 10. It was a really great movie. I loved it. Looking forward to checking it out when it releases on physical media. Hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, please be sure to leave it a like rating. Remember, you can find more information, including affiliate links to purchase Bumblebee, down in the description below. If you haven't already, subscribe for more videos. Check out the suggested videos. Check out my website, bobsmoviereview.com. And I'll see you guys next time.